morning, everyone. This is Amanda Aguilar, your host for See You Later 2020, closing the books at year end zero. I'm happy to have you guys on. There's a ton of you guys showing up. Um, still more people coming in, which is awesome. Uh, this webinar series actually came out of me writing the book over the summer. I realized that uh, I thought I knew a lot about zero, but until you are required to sit down and push every button and see what every option does, Sometimes you're like, oh, I didn't really understand this. So definitely the first two sessions um, that we did were based on stuff that I just thought people need to know more about um, from writing the book. This session is, um, I'm just sharing with you my experience of how I close books in Zero. We've done this for several years. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I do have an accounting practice. In addition to having elephant training, um, I do still run an accounting practice down in New Orleans. And, um, and so even though that's probably only about a quarter of my time now, I do love to make sure that I am the one wrapping up the year and stuff. So I'm gonna share that with you. So the plan for today is one thing. It's just for me to share my year end checklist in zero with you. Everyone has a different way of doing this. Um, if, you, if you surveyed 10 different um, zero partners, there'd probably be 10 different checklists and 10 different ways to do this. So this is just how I do it. Um, you should probably <laughs> adapt it for your clients and your types of clients. We have a lot of sole proprietor professional services type clients. So um, marketing consultants and um, I have a, a blog writer, I've got a um, bunch of lawyers. So this is not gonna fit probably, you know, as is e-commerce companies or construction companies or manufacturing companies or anybody with a lot of inventory, but hopefully it's a good starting spot for you. In the handouts uh, section, you should see my uh, PDF of my list. That's basically what we are going to cover today. Um, review AR for sale and miscoded invoices. Again, this is um, part of what we were just talking about where your, um, your we had invoices that were really weren't weren't stale. They had been paid. We just didn't have them matched correctly. When we have that problem, we're going to overstate our income because we're going to be coding um, an error. We're going to code the transaction lines instead of matching them to the invoices where their revenue has already been recorded. Um, and then the other the other thing that we want to look at is is there anything that's old that we really need to write off uncollectible? Um, so let's take one of these and say this Irene no good, she's never gonna pay us. So let's go ahead and um, and write off her invoice. I generally do this using a credit note. Um, I don't void it because I, I want to see the progression, right? So I would add a credit note. When you add a credit note to an invoice from this screen um, versus the, the overview screen, if you go into an invoice and do like I just did, add a credit note, what that does is it takes the entire invoice and flips it around. And so Zero says, well, here's the entire credit note, which is the mirror opposite of the invoice, every line. Um, do you want to make any adjustments? Which you can, you can go in and change these things. Um, or do you want us to prove it? Now, this is gonna depend on how your clients are set up and how they want to recognize bad debt or, debt or write off bad debt. They might just wanna reverse the, the revenues um, or they might want to post these to um, bad debts on a certain, um, on the date that it's written off, whichever. So that's just gonna depend on how you guys handle um, writing off invoices, but we do wanna make sure at the end of the year that we're accounting for stale invoices and, and getting rid of that income if, uh, if we're never gonna collect it. And then clearly the next um, step would be to review AP for unpaid bills. Um, two reasons for this. One is that it's just a good practice. If we want to, you know, get our taxable income down, we want to pay these bills. Um, but by the end of the year, you know, we want to say, well, let's do a quick and dirty and um, get it out. If it's after the end of the year, it's, um, then uh, the reason we want to do this is to make sure that we don't have um, errors. So let's pull up, I think I created a data set for, let's see, bills to pay. Okay, so let's go to a waiting payment and let's just take a peek at what our bills are that need to be paid. Um, and so 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back over here in the all because I did see the one that I wanted to look at. Okay. Okay. So um, if you were on yesterday, one of the things we talked about with processing expense claims was that uh, you can, a lot of folks, us included, we use Gusto as our payroll processor and we would use, we would send our employee reimbursements through Gusto. So Gusto integrates very nicely with Zero, except for the fact that you can't, the integration is either yes or no. You can't say, I only want to send over certain kinds of bills, like I want to send my payroll bills, but I don't want to send contractor payments or reimbursements. And that creates problems where sometimes there are duplicates in bills. Okay, so if I used uh, I used Gusto to pay myself um, for all these expense claims here, um, I went into Gusto and said, Amanda's going to get $477.32. And I did. Over on um, the Gusto side, what's going to happen is that part of that integration is it sends over a bill. And if somebody is doing the reconciling and is not aware that this is a duplicate, um, then it's going to get coded and it's going to get used. So this is the Gusto version of a, a reimbursement. You usually pick one line. Um, as a default. So somebody's just matching and click happy. Like <laughs> I had a client once that said um, zero bank reconciliation is a little bit like video poker. Like you just get in a phase and you just click OK. So somebody's clicking OK and it matches. But what really needed to happen was that this Gusto bill should have been deleted and that bank line should have been matched to these expense claims. So we would only notice this if we were paying attention to what was still awaiting payment. Um, so we need to go delete the Gusto bill um, and rematch that bank line to these um, expense claims that have come in through through zero and actually have the correct coding in them. Okay, so where are we? We are on five. Um, verify all balance sheet balances. So all of our asset and liabilities that are not bank accounts, now is the time we go in and um, verify that those and I have the best news for you guys if you follow me on um, Facebook you saw that I was giddy about this this morning um, the account transactions report now includes a column for it's called um, related account it's a split column like there's a split column in, in a QBO as of this morning there's now one in zero so that means for this piece of our checklist, it's going to be a lot easier to do our reconciliations and figure stuff out. So I'm just going to grab, probably don't have a good, real good example um, to use, but you know, we're talking about lines of credit and um, you know, any kind of asset or liability accounts. We want to make sure that those are trued up at the end of the year. Um, we can run an account transaction report that will show us an opening balance, the ins and outs, closing balance, and da, 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 now this related account. Um, screen. I'm, I'm going to show you just um, for those of, those of you who might really want to use this. I'll show you what this looks like um, with a checking account. It's probably a better example. And it'll show you the um, the coding on the right side. This is huge. This is huge. This is probably the thing that <clears throat> I hear the most from folks that this is why they can't move clients to zero because there's this report didn't exist. So, um, okay, so we are going to want to verify all of our asset. Um, all of our asset uh, and liability um, accounts, all of our balance sheet accounts. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to do is this is what I do. I do a quick review of the chart of accounts. And what does that mean? It means I'm going to go see if my client has added any accounts that they shouldn't have. Um, I'm also going to just think about it. Think about how if I need to add if I need to add any new accounts, either for current, you know changes for example ppp stuff so you know i'm going to probably start to go into my um, clients and say okay well we need to create another gl account for ppp reimbursed expenses or um you know back when the tax law changed to uh make entertainment non-deductible so you, everybody had a meals and entertainment line well now we need to split that so that's one reason another reason is i want to think about strategically what is the framework my clients need so as our clients are growing hopefully they're doing really well 
what is the new framework that they're going to need for reporting going forward so that's the chart of accounts the chart of accounts is the map for how we get data out years from now so every year we need to be conscious about it and really think like do we need to break down our sales um gl account into different channels into different products like we want to think about that every year so i'll just show folks real quickly um we will um, delete, let's see, chart of accounts under advanced. Um, I would go into each of these tabs because I think it's easier to take it in chunks and just kind of eyeball it and just look and see, do my clients do anything weird? Oh, as a matter of fact, they've created this weird account code down here for the Sunny Bank credit card, SBCC, because Zero will let you do that. It will let you put in numbers and, and letters. Um, so yeah, we probably want to change this to something like you know, 105, so it goes in the reports. So I would make those changes. Again, I would add accounts. Um, I might delete some accounts. So if, if uh, my, some of the charts of accounts in Xero, um, the default was, it's not, it's an expense. Um, the default in Xero, there was a general expenses account forever. I don't even know if it's still there because we don't use the defaults anymore, but like that's the dumbest name <laughs> for a lot. Like my clients love to stick stuff in general expenses. So if this is here, I'm gonna get rid of that. Um, you, to get rid of a line, you click the box to the left, you can delete or archive. Delete means it never happened, um, so it just doesn't exist. You, if any transactions have been posted to a general ledger line, um, you can't delete it, you can only archive it. So archive will take it off of the choices going forward, take it off of stuff, but um, you can't actually delete it because there's history there. Okay. So quick review chart of accounts. Um, review of a detailed general ledger. So, um, to, so the first step of, of what we did was making sure all the bank lines were shown up, like um, the, all the bank lines made it into the system, but that doesn't mean that they're all coded correctly. So we want to review coding. Um, so one way to do this is with a general ledger report, although now that account transactions has that split column that might be even better, but I'll just show the general ledger report. Um, it's kind of old school. So we're gonna run it for the whole year and we want to sort by code, not by name. Um, and then if you scroll down, you can export it to Excel. And then what I do is I just um, eyeball it. Like you get pretty good at this after a while where you can see the outliers. You can see the things that are, that are um, not right. Hold on, let me see where if it's opened on my other screen. Give me a sec. Okay, so I would scroll down um, and just kind of eyeball it, look for um, for weird, you know, you, chunks of things are going to look the same. So when something looks different, I would stop and say, okay, does that make sense? Yeah, okay, that's great. Um, here, th there's a, you know, all these are credits except this one's a debit. Kinko's copy services, that's clearly a mistake. So then I'd go back to my bank statement um, and I'm sorry, my bank transactions and go and recode it. So let's talk about how to recode. Um, raise your hand if you love find and recode. I think find and recode in zero is like the best feature, probably the best feature. I think it was, this is what a dork I am. I think it was released in 2017. Um, it is the truly like one of the best feature improvements the Zero has ever released. So find and recode means we um, we can find transactions using query criteria and recode them in bulk. So let's say that we um, notice when we do our general ledger review that we coded all of our Acme Chemical transactions to um, cost of goods sold, but really they were internal for janitorial use or whatever. So first thing is to go set our conditions for the query and look at all these choices. You can do so many things. In fact, um, we've talked about in the past train in some past trainings about using find and recode as strictly a search tool, like because the search fields are so much better than the general search up here. So if you're looking for something, um, come in and, and use these fields. Even if you're not gonna recode, the find part of find and recode is worth it. So, um, but we're gonna go look for, sorry, we're gonna look for um, contact is Acme Chemical. 
And I would always um, generally put date, bear, date restrictions around this too, so I don't go into prior periods. Um, Acne chemical, and I see, you know, they're all, a lot of these are coded to cost of goods, but really they should have been to janitorial. So I select all of them, go to recode. I'm gonna recode the source transactions because it was a mistake. We coded it the wrong way. And I'm gonna change it to janitorial expenses and hit review. And then zero is gonna tell me it might take forever to do this. It doesn't, it only takes a couple seconds. And now magically they're all fixed. So that is um, the one of the best features in zero. Um, make sure you grab those downloads um, with the checklist if that's something you want to keep. There is a Facebook group if you're on Facebook. Um, this is a pretty good resource. I'm trying to build it as a community where folks can ask questions and help each other out. So um, if you're on Facebook, feel free to join. Um, love you guys. Take care, and I'll see you around soon. Thank you.